Hello and welcome to another episode of Geared Toward Gear. My name is Sean and I'm so glad you're here because today we're talking about what I think for me is kind of the ultimate true everyday carry pocket trauma kit and that is this guy right here. So we're going to break into this, talk about all the contents, kind of the philosophy and mindset of how I put this together and I think you're going to be, uh, I think you're going to like this, I really do because um, a lot of thought went into this in terms of how I put this together. But before I do that, real quickly, I want to talk about kind of my levels of medical preparedness. And we'll start with a basic boo-boo kit or first aid kit. This is what I keep in my EDC bag, band-aids, gauze pads, ointments, medications. This gets used pretty frequently and it's in my EDC bag. Uh, next would be something like a dedicated trauma kit. This is my wife's save a life kit for her vehicle. And this is a true trauma kit for massive trauma. I also have one in my vehicle that I built, and that's this one here. I did a video on this a while back. Um, so those are two dedicated trauma kits, but they're a little bulkier. Uh, then I've got even smaller boo-boo kits. I have a full video coming up about these, and I have one of these in each of my trauma kits, right? So if I just have a headache or need a Band-Aid, I don't have to bust out some expensive equipment. So those are the boo-boo kits. And then I've got my tourniquet here. This is my EDC tourniquet, which is a Generation 3 soft T wide tourniquet. I will be doing a video soon comparing it to the new Generation 4, which is this one here. Um, but that's in a whole other video. So this is my EDC tourniquet, Gen 3 soft T wide in a Filster flat pack carrier that I carry on my belt. This is kind of a recent addition, but that's now how I'm carrying it. And this is the pocket trauma kit. So let's get this off screen for just a second. Everything I just showed you and talked about, the first aid kit for the EDC bag, the trauma kits, the boo-boo kits, um, of all of those things, the only thing that lives on my body that I carry on my person is this, a tourniquet, right? So when we talk about things like EDC, just the phrase everyday carry, I think it's used a number of different ways, right? Like I could say, you know, some of the things that I EDC are, you know, pens, multi-tools, knives, flashlights, guns, you know, handkerchiefs, things like that. But I don't actually carry all of those things every single day. I carry some of those things sometimes. Some of them I do carry all of the time. I kind of have my non-negotiables. The other things kind of come and go. So what I wanted to kind of set out to build is a true every single day carry trauma kit that will fit into a pocket, right? This is not a trauma kit, this is a boo-boo kit. This is a trauma kit, but it will not fit in a pocket, okay? So what I kind of came to realize is that I'm very prepared when it comes to the number of kits that I have, where I have them stored. I've got my basic boo-boo kits, I've got my trauma kits in the vehicles, I've got a full backpack style kind of blowout jump bag uh, that's very comprehensive in the trunk of my car but this is the only thing I ever carried on my person. And in light of some recent events that have happened, uh, two specifically in my home state of Texas, I decided to upgrade the level of medical preparedness that I carry on my body every single day. And when I say every day, I mean every single day. Uh, and up to this point, it's only been the tourniquet, but no longer I have added the geared toward gear every day carry pocket trauma kit is what I'm calling it. Um, and I'm pretty excited about it. So, you know, I guess I decided as opposed to getting scared, right? When bad things happen and you see things on the news, instead of getting scared, just get prepared, right? That's kind of the name of the game here. Um, we've all heard the saying when seconds count, uh, help is just minutes away. So you're going to be the one responsible for taking care of yourself in most cases. And I just wanted to be a little more prepared. So that's why I built this and a lot of thought went into it. So let's see what's inside here. It is five items. And when I take all this stuff out, you're probably going to be thinking, eh, Sean, that looks a little sparse to me. Um, I don't know if that's quite going to cut it, but I think you'll be surprised. And I'd love to hear your feedback um, as I'm going through this. At any point, if you want to leave a comment down below, let me know if this type of kit is something that you would be interested in purchasing. Uh, I, I don't have any plans of selling them, but if something like this was offered commercially, is it the type of kit that you would be in the market to purchase as opposed to something like a pre-built kit, like a save a life kit or building a kit like mine, which probably costs me uh, about $200, $250 worth of gear in this kit alone. The kit that we're looking at right now 
will cost you about $55 to build. And that does not include the tourniquet. The tourniquet would be separate. But just this kit would be about 55 bucks. So let's just get everything out and we'll talk about it. We'll talk about the container, the bag that it's stored in, because that's also a very important component. And a lot of thought actually went into that, believe it or not. Um, so I did spend a lot of time deciding what to put in, what stays, what goes. And I went through a few iterations and this is what I landed on. So let's set the bag back here, just kind of out of the way for now. So that is the Geared Toward Gear EDC Pocket Trauma Kit with the addition of the supplementary tourniquet. So what we're looking at here is a pair of nitro gloves, a Sharpie, hemostatic gauze, S-rolled gauze, and chest seals. So as I was starting this exercise, I decided that there were four specific things that I wanted to be able to treat. And those four things were massive arterial bleeding from, a, from an extremity. So that's the tourniquet. So we've got that covered. The second thing was a penetrating chest trauma or a sucking chest wound, something like a gunshot wound or a stabbing. You know, anything that penetrates through the chest cavity or chest wall rather into the thoracic cavity or the pleural space. So that is our chest seals. And that could be a gunshot wound or a stabbing. But I've even seen a, a mountain biker take a really bad spill and have a root, a piece of a root of a tree that was sticking out of the ground actually penetrate through their chest wall and create a sucking chest wound. So it's not always gunshots and stabbings. Uh, so that was number two is penetrating chest trauma. So we got that covered. Number three was wound packing. And these are both wound packing material. And we'll touch on that a little more in a second. And the fourth thing was a pressure dressing, which again, these two things accomplish. So tourniquet, self-explanatory for extremity hemorrhage. Chest seals, self-explanatory for penetrating chest trauma. For wound packing, I have two items. I have Sealox Rapid. And this is essentially the same thing as something like Quick Clock Combat Gauze. It's just a different brand. Sealox Rapid actually works more quickly. And they call this the Rapid Ribbon because it's pretty, it's pretty narrow. It's one inch wide by five feet in length. And so what that means is a smaller footprint. And that's why I chose it for this kit because I was trying to save space. So Sealox Rapid Ribbon is a hemostatic impregnated gauze for packing wounds. And those would typically be, as we've talked about in the past, junctional hemorrhages, uh, you know, a severe bleed in somewhere like the groin or the armpit, the neck perhaps. So that is wound packing material. This is also wound packing material. It's called S-Rolled Gauze. It's made by North American Rescue. And the package that it actually comes in is about three times this size. And when you take it out of that, this is what you're left with. So I took it out of its outer packaging to make the footprint smaller. And this is like four inches wide by like five or six yards in length. There is an inordinate amount of gauze in here. It's so deceiving because it's so compact, but essentially you just take your thumb and you pop this open and it just feeds out. It just feeds out like a box of Kleenex, but it's just one contiguous piece of gauze. And there is so much gauze in here. It, it would blow your mind. Um, so I could pack a lot of gauze into a wound using either this and or the Sealox Rapid Ribbon. The fourth thing was a pressure dressing. And so I thought about something like an Israeli bandage or a commercially uh, manufactured pressure dressing. Problem is uh, space. I mean, that was really it. I'd love to have a, an Israeli, but space was a factor. And so I can very easily create a pressure dressing using the Sealox Rapid Ribbon and the S rolled gauze. By placing this onto a wound and wrapping that in place and apply, applying pressure with the S rolled gauze, I can create a pressure bandage. In addition, I could take this, put it directly onto a wound and apply direct pressure. So if, if I had like a non life threatening bleed, maybe a, a bleed from a vein that was not arterial in nature and I didn't need to apply a tourniquet, uh, I could use this for those more moderate injuries. Um, so instead of breaking out my $30 uh, Sealox, I could use this for the more minor stuff. You can also wrap a head wound with something like this. So this is very versatile for both wound packing and for just kind of minor and moderate uh, wounds. I mean, even something that technically would just need a band-aid, you know, or like, you know, a four by four piece of gauze. Like if this is all you have, bust this out. These cost like four bucks, 
right? Who cares? Um, so I really do like the S-Rolled gauze from North American Rescue. And of course, Sharpies for marking tourniquet time and gloves are for protecting my hands. Now you'll notice there's no chest decompression needle. There's no trauma shears. There's no nasal airway, um, none of these things. And that was all intentional. And it was all in the name of saving space. Would I like to have a chest decompression needle? Sure, I would. However, if I apply a chest seal properly and quickly enough, I can prevent the development of a tension pneumothorax, which would require the use of a chest decompression needle. Um, same thing with trauma shears. Like, I carry a pocket knife every single day. So if I gotta cut clothes off, I'm using my pocket knife. This is an everyday carry in my pocket trauma kit. And for me, it covers those four things. Massive arterial bleeding from, a, from an extremity, penetrating chest trauma, wound packing, and pressure dressing. And I feel very comfortable and confident with these items that I could address all of those things um, and, and really not be wanting or wishing for something else that I didn't have. So that's the contents. And again, that's gonna cost you about 50 to $55 to build yourself, plus whatever it costs you for your tourniquet of choice, which I think this is a non-negotiable. I would never carry just this. I would always carry it in conjunction with a tourniquet. Now the bag, to me, is also very critical. I chose a lock sack. Now these are very heavy mill, watertight and airtight bags that are made from plastic and they are fantastic. So why would I pick a plastic bag? Well, something like a nylon uh, kit like this, these are great. Um, I have nothing against these, but you gotta unzip it. You can't see what's in here. You have no idea what's in here unless I open it and show you, right? Um, with this, you can visually see everything that's in your kit and you can also access it incredibly quickly. So with these lock sacks, although they're very heavy mill plastic, they're very durable. If you grab the seam right here and you peel and pull with just moderate force, the entire bag will split at the seams and fillet open and all of your contents will be laid out right in front of you just like you see here. Um, so rapid access, you, you couldn't get more rapid access than literally just ripping it open and everything comes out. Uh, now, is that as organized as something like a Save a Life kit where you have individual pouches and pockets? No, but for expediency, um, this is where it's at for me. And so, again, a lot of thought went into that and this is what I landed on. So let me pack this stuff back in here, show you how I make it fit, and then we'll talk about dimensions. So the chest seals go in first and I fold them basically where the chest seals end to where you've got these kind of two 90 degree uh, bends like such. So we'll slide that in there real quick. And if it takes you a little time to get this packed in here, who cares? Because you're probably never gonna bust this open, hopefully. Um, and if you do, you just rip the whole damn thing open. So if it takes you 10 minutes sitting at home to get your kit set up, so be it. Take your time, there's no rush to get this thing set up. Next is the S Rolled Gauze from North American Rescue. You can get a two pack of those for about 10 bucks on Amazon. Uh, the chest seals go for about 16 bucks. With the chest seals, I'd probably recommend buying them directly from North American Rescue, but that's just my personal preference. So as you can see, we've kind of folded the chest seal over, so that kind of creates the base of our kit. The next item would be the Sealox Rapid. So I've already got it pretty compact, and I'm going to feed this in here, kind of turn it sideways as I do. And again, don't worry about it taking you a couple minutes to get everything in here the way you like it because uh, hopefully you're gonna put it in here, you're gonna seal it up, and you're never gonna open it. That is the, the name of the game. But again, if you need to, you just rip these bags right open. We gotta get it turned. Okay, so there is our sea locks. Kinda straighten things out here a little bit, make it nice and neat. Now we're gonna kinda push everything to one side so I can slide the Sharpie down one side or the other, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna push everything to the right. I'm gonna take the Sharpie and I'm gonna feed it down the side of the bag here. And you'll notice it's kind of bulging the bag, but these things are so strong, it's insane, these lock sacks. 
they are incredibly strong bags, so I'm not worried about puncturing it. And even if there was like a pinhole in here, I, I don't care. Like all this stuff is individually sealed. It's gonna be in my pocket. So I'm not too concerned about that. The last thing is the pair of gloves and those are just gonna sit right on top of the Sealox Rapid Ribbon. Then all of this excess in the chest seal is going to basically fold over, right? So we're kind of making that 90 degree fold that we saw earlier to kind of capture those gloves right on top of the Sharpie. And once we've done that, we've got some excess plastic bag from our lock sack. We're gonna fold that over, seal those double zippers, and that is our pocket trauma kit. And that is going to be five and a half inches in length, four inches in width, and about three quarters of an inch in depth or in thickness. So this truly will easily fit in my cargo pocket. And it weighs probably two and a half ounces. Extraordinarily lightweight, maybe three ounces. Very, very lightweight. I mean, nothing in here is heavy. It's very, you know, it's, it's gauze and chest seals and a Sharpie. It's, it's super, super lightweight. So when I put this in my cargo pocket, it's so unobtrusive that I, I can't even tell you. Uh, and you can certainly fit this in a front pocket or back pocket. But, but that's it. That is my pocket EDC trauma kit. And it covers the bases that I want it to cover. You may have different opinions, and that's totally fine. But for me, this is kind of my ideal pocket EDC trauma kit. Now, what's cool about this also is that this could be, of course, in conjunction with a tourniquet, this could be your, your only trauma kit, really. Um, and what I mean by that is a lot of people don't want to carry something like a Save a Life kit. Maybe you just don't have that much interest in spending that kind of money or having a kit that big, you don't have room for it in your bag, and you're just not really into it. If you want something super slim that's not expensive, you could put this in any EDC bag, in a purse, you could put this in your, your desk drawer at your office. If you're a teacher, if you work in an office environment, just put it in your desk drawer, put it in your glove box, put it anywhere uh, that you would, you know, potentially need something like this and, and just let that be your trauma kit. I would personally recommend that you have something more substantial and more comprehensive like, like a save a life kit or like a hand built kit. That would definitely be my recommendation. But again, as I mentioned, when we talk about everyday carry, I think sometimes, and I am guilty of this, we're under the illusion that we carry things every day that we don't actually carry every day. This is in my car every day. But if I go into the grocery store, not every time that that happens do I take this with me, right? If I go to the beach, which I did recently, I did take this with me to the beach, but again, it's not with me 100% of the time. And I was seeking to build something that I could truly carry 100% of the time without any excuse as to why I'm not carrying more medical gear. And that's just a choice that I made. A lot of people aren't gonna care about this and just don't really have a desire to carry any, any medical gear, even, even just a tourniquet. What I would say is for those of you who carry a firearm every day as part of your EDC, you have a concealed handgun license and you are a, a legal um, you know, firearm carrier, and I guess it depends on what state you, you live in. Some states you don't need a license, but point being, if you carry a firearm every day, I implore you, at the very least, to carry one of these on your body, either on your belt, in your pocket, it could be a cat tourniquet, a soft EY, those are the two I'd recommend. Uh, carry a tourniquet, please, if you carry a gun, carry a tourniquet. Um, but I would step it up even further, personally, if you carry a gun especially. Um, and even if you don't, I mean, and that's the great thing about things like this is that if you don't carry a firearm, it doesn't matter, you can still carry medical. You can't carry a firearm into uh, a hospital. You can carry this into a hospital. You can't legally carry a firearm into a post office. You could legally carry this into a post office, right? There's nothing sharp, pointy, stabby, or bang, bang going on here. So although you may find yourself in a situation where you feel like you've been disarmed based on the you know legislation where you live, um, you're never gonna be disarmed of your, your right to carry medical equipment. There's nothing uh, illegal about this. And again, 
you know, there may be comments down below and it's totally fine. I welcome all comments to say, you know, you could totally fit a, a chest decompression needle in there or you could fit a second pair of gloves or whatever. And that may be true. But again, for me, I want to keep it very simple and straightforward, something that I can carry every day and that really anybody can use because everything in here is a basic skill. You don't need much training at all to apply a chest seal. You don't need much training to learn how to properly apply a tourniquet. You do need training, but it's not something that you have to become licensed or certified in. So anybody can can carry this and use this effectively and, and save lives. So that is the choice I made was to upgrade my on-body EDC medical, and I did it by way of the Gear toward gear, EDC pocket trauma kit. Again, leave the comments below, uh, positive or negative. Let me know what you think. And again, if this is the type of kit that speaks to you more so than something like this, just based on cost, size, simplicity, things like that, let me know. Let me know if this is something that you would purchase if it was made available commercially at, at a fair price. So that is it. That is the EDC pocket trauma kit. Thank you guys for watching. I, I know these videos tend to go a little longer when I talk medical, and it's just because I'm very passionate about it. It's something I did as a career and, and I'm licensed in, and I just I, it's very important to me. So thank you for indulging me. I really do appreciate it, and I'll talk to you soon.